our, 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 if it's your first time, you won't remember that, will you? Uh, if this is your first time with us, let me tell you that your mics are being muted upon entry. Uh, if you've been with us before, you already realize that. We ask us to use the chat role there uh, to uh, uh, to talk with us. So we're going to uh, we're going to give everybody a chance to to get on board here. But but I just want to say you know, greetings to our EO family worldwide. I mean, wow! Uh, it always amazes me to see where the people are coming from as they're watching us uh, here today. It's always exciting. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, I mean, there was a '70s song with that, right? Uh, I'm so excited. I just can't hide it. Uh, and, and the reason for that is because in the next few weeks, I'm going to have opportunities to see so many of you in person. Uh, we've got our celebration cruise coming up that uh, embarks on Monday. Uh, and there's going to be a bunch of you on that. I'm looking forward to seeing you and uh, having coffee, talking, chatting, dinner uh, with you and uh, meals and sharing some training time and some worship services and uh, some lectures. Uh, so excited about that. Uh, so I am pumped up. And then uh, when I get back from that, uh, I'll be heading off to the Holy Land. So I get to see all of our friends there. And I'm I'm really, really pumped up. So uh, looking forward. So thanks for being here uh, today. Thanks for being with us. Uh, Mark A is over on our social profiles, watching the chat there. So if you have questions uh, there, type those in. Mark will uh, get those to Ryan and we'll get them off to James and Ashley and myself and others here today. So we'll make sure we answer the questions. Uh, Jamie Armstrong is monitoring Zoom. Uh, he'll be able to chat and answer your questions there. And if not, he'll send those over to us uh, also so we can uh, answer. So today we've got a lot of things happening. Uh, hope that you're excited about it. Uh, we're going to be talking with James and Ashley and uh, Don and Claudia Erickson, who are all in the Holy Land. Uh, Don and Claudia have a group there and James and Ashley are there uh, taking care of things as they ramp back up. So we're uh, looking forward to hearing from them. Uh, we're also going to hear from some River Cruise guests. Uh, about uh, their experiences and looking forward to, to getting uh, to hear from those on that. But first, uh, we've got a special treat for you here. Uh, we have Alyssa with us this morning. Uh, Alyssa uh, Harrell is in our Lakeland studio. She is uh, working with our EOX program. And so we're going to get a chance to talk with Alyssa this morning. So good morning, Alyssa. How are you? Hi, Tom. Good morning, everybody. It's great to be here back again. Um, I was looking back at our notes. It's been over a year since I got to come on here and talk about EOX. So thank you for having me again. Well, great. Well, we're glad you're here. I mean, I mean, so let's talk about EOX. It it had its birth during COVID, right? So so that's a really good thing that's come out of this this time period. Yeah, I'm actually super excited. I felt like it couldn't have come at a more perfect time. Um, you know, being able to offer the small group tours at a time when people may still be a little bit nervous about COVID is actually fantastic. So I just wanted to come on here and kind of go over EOX once again, just to remind you guys that it is an option for you. Um, so you may be asking, maybe it's your first time joining us, what is EOX? Maybe you saw it in a host newsletter, maybe sometimes you're seeing it on our EO Facebook where they're sharing the posts from our EOX page. But EOX is our new small group program. So we're still doing our land tours around the world. We have a variety of different programs and I'll talk about some of those, but the small groups are six to 16 people. So they are private tours. You won't see any of our standard like departures, like our Holy Land Classic or Bible Land Exploration. Everything is completely private and custom to your group. Um, there are no set departure dates, so you get to choose that based on what works good for your people. We have the same kind of inclusions that you'll see on our bigger tours. So your guide will be there. You'll have your driver, your bus, hotels, entrance fees. Don't need to worry about that. You will also have certain meals depending on which itinerary you choose. But you'll see that the itineraries are a little bit different than what EO typically offers. So you'll see a lot more cultural experiences in our itineraries. And we'll go over that as well. And then the other big main difference we have here is these tours are typically sold as a ground only program. So since there is only six to 16 people, um, we typically don't do the group airfare on those, but we do have our EO concierge team that would be happy to help you with those flights if your group needed them. So you may be asking, who's using EOX? Why are we offering this right now? 
Um, actually, a lot of different kinds of people are using EOX. You may have a group of friends. I know we recently were looking into putting a tour together for a group of like six women that wanted to go to Africa to celebrate their 40th birthdays together that year. Um, some small church groups that we have going. Maybe you don't want to offer it to your entire church, but if you have a little group that wants to go to the Holy Land together, we'd be happy to do that. A lot of multi-generational families. So maybe grandma and grandpa wanted to take the parents and the teenagers with them. We could do that as well. And then another thing we're seeing right now is since we had to unfortunately postpone and move some tours around, maybe your group the numbers got a little bit smaller and you didn't want to be combined with anybody. So you took your small group and moved it over to EOX. So you guys can still travel, but with your small group and you're completely on your own on a private tour. Um, we do have a variety of different itineraries that we've added since we first launched it. You can see there the website if you go to eo.travel slash eox. We have all of our itineraries that we're currently offering there. You'll see a bunch of different Holy Land programs, some Greece, Turkey with one of my favorites, the Blue Voyage Gullet. You got Iceland, Kenya, all kinds of different things. I do want to note, though, that those are not the only thing we can do. Those are just example itineraries it just kind of get your brain going there if you don't see what you want there feel free to reach out to me i'd be happy to put together whatever you needed and um, we actually have already had some groups travel to greece iceland and the holy land we have a bunch more coming up and i think we may have some pictures that i can show you later on so like I was saying, um, you do have some different touring sites involved with the EOX programs, um, some different cultural items that we add into our programs. So maybe you are going to the Golan Heights to visit a nice little winery there. We have some groups hiking part of the Jesus Trail. So the whole trail is 40 miles. You may not want to hike the whole thing, but we can let you hike part of it. I know when I travel, one of the most important things to me is the food, of course. So we can take you on a market tour in Jerusalem. Uh, we can help you visit one of the Bedouin camps to kind of learn about their life and what their days look like. In Greece, some of the options you'll see there, um, typically with our bigger programs, you don't get to go to the smaller islands and actually get to stay there. Maybe you did that on one of our cruises, but you wanted to stay in a hotel so you can get those perfect Instagrammable pictures in Santorini. So you'll get to overnight on the smaller islands there like Santorini and Naxos. And then like I was saying with Turkey, you guys have to check that one out. If you don't know what the Gullet Cruise is, it's definitely going to be added to your bucket list. It is basically a big sailboat and you get the entire boat to yourself for the group for a week. So definitely check that one out. It is amazing. Um, one of the big, big things people always ask at first is, is this gonna be more expensive than what I'm going to get with EO? And the short answer there is no. It's really not. Obviously, of course, there are fixed costs that we have um, for the group, you know, the guide, the bus, that kind of thing. And it is split amongst a lower number of people. But the good thing is, is we have really great relationships with our partners and whatnot. So we can get the price very similar to what you're already getting with EO. And like I said, it's completely just your group. So you don't have to have the worry of being combined with other groups. Maybe you have a group that's a little more cautious with COVID and a little nervous to travel, but they still want to be able to have these experiences. It's a great option for them. It'll help ease their mind. Um, you will have easier access to the sites. So you don't have the big 50 seater bus pulling into the site. You don't have to worry about 40 people getting on and off the bus and the bathroom breaks and the this and the um, that. You will have easier no, access to the sites. Have, so um, you don't have the big 50 seater bus in pulling into the site. You don't have to worry about 40 people the getting on and off the bus and the bathroom breaks and like this and that. You will have easier access to the sites. Melissa, so talk for just a second, please. Hey, Alyssa, hold on. Can, can you stop for just one second? Because sure. some massive feedback that came in, we were double hearing you there. So I want to give you oh, a no. chance <laughs> to stop. I don't know 
if that came from our studio or for somebody's mic got turned on. So uh, I think we're good to go again. Okay, perfect. So just to recap, you will have the easier access to the sites. So you don't have to worry about the big bus pulling in and everybody having to take time to load on and off the bus. We do utilize the mini buses and um, you don't have to worry about everybody with their bathroom breaks and their long shopping. You know, it's just your group. So you, you may have more time at the sites, maybe be able to fit in a couple more sites because you're not losing that time there. Um, the departure date is completely up to you. So whatever works for your group, you are not set into certain departure dates that we have prearranged for you. You can choose what sites work for your group if you wanted to add in something that we don't typically add or if you have been to one site a couple times and you didn't want to go back there we can do that or if you had hotels that you really liked and wanted to stay at um, we can look into that i know one of the things that has been really popular is people want to stay actually inside the old city so we have groups doing that um you will have a strong sense of community with your group obviously when you're in a small group everybody really gets to know each other you spend a lot of time together so you get that bonding experience that maybe you wouldn't get as much if you were with a bigger group and one of the big things that people have really liked is the contacts all go through me so no need to worry about calling in maybe getting different information from people i will speak with all of your guests and you as a group leader if you needed me to jump on a zoom call to help your group out if you have a meeting i'd be happy to do that as well so our next very exciting slide our very first promotion that we're offering um, I wanted to do something special since it's the beginning of a new year and Israel's finally open again. So to celebrate, I wanted to extend this offer to anybody as a group leader. If you book a group by the end of March this year for a 2022 departure and get your 10 guests on that group, you will be getting a $500 air upgrade bonus for you to use with our concierge department. So that is super exciting. Um, we've never done that before. So I would love to help out as many of you group leaders as possible to try and get that extra bonus for you. So if you'd like to go ahead and chat, I'd be happy to do so. There's no harm in just talking about things. Um, my phone number is there with the extension. Also feel free to email me at any point. And as always, we would love to have you follow along with us on our social media. Um, we have some different groups there now, so hopefully we'll be posting some pictures of those that you guys can see. Uh, great presentation, Alyssa. We really appreciate that. I mean, I'm excited because we've been talking about uh, EOX and, and all that it can do. And I've had some friends who traveled with EOX uh, and, and did the small group. Uh, they were the ones who did the Blue Gullet cruise, by the way. And yes, I'm very jealous very of them. Jealous. Yeah, <laughs> that's one that's on my list that I want to get back out and do. So, so we talk about these. I think when we advertise EOS, we talk about being uh, exceptional expeditions, right? So, so what are some of the special things that some of these groups have gotten to to do so far, and that does kind of out of the way places they've traveled, maybe. Yeah, so I think you'll see some pictures coming up on the screen here. I kind of rounded up some pictures from our groups that have already traveled so far. I wanted to share those with you. So you'll see our guests here in Iceland back in October got to go snowmobiling. Once again, so jealous. I didn't get to do that when I went to Iceland. Um, all the different caves they got to visit and the black sand beaches. It's absolutely beautiful. They got to see the northern lights didn't get to see that either when I went, so very jealous there. Um, we also had a very, very exciting thing happen yesterday. So we have our first group in the Holy Land right now, and I've been emailing back and forth with that host, and he let me know yesterday they were at the Magdala Church, and they were singing, and the Magdala Church actually live-streamed them on their YouTube page, which has 196,000 followers. So I'm not saying that you'll get famous on one of our tours, but it looks like the chances are a little bit better than if you didn't travel. So you'll see that video here. I'm not sure if we had any sound on that, but that was super incredible. That's amazing. That's really cool that uh, yeah. singing 
because that's a, such a beautiful place right there in this as you enter the Magdala Church there and in that foyer area there. So I bet you it really sounded pretty marvelous. That, that's cool. So yeah, I saw the ice caves there in Iceland. Not been to Iceland yet either. Uh, you got to go. Yeah, yeah. So that that's pretty exciting. So we're excited about EOX. We're glad it's launched. And we really appreciate all your uh, attention and know that everybody gets really great personal attention from that uh, and from okay. you and, and appreciate that. So James, do you have any uh, questions for Alyssa from there in the Holy Land? No, we're waiting to welcome that group um, here at the altar. I, I think they're coming down tomorrow, or tomorrow or Saturday, but uh, we're waiting for Alyssa's group to come. And um, it would be interesting to see if there are sound because it's. I think they're all predominantly Korean speaking. Um, so yeah. that may have been why they were live streaming. They may have been singing in Korean. I, I don't know, but um, uh, no, Alyssa does a great job. I, I will second that and uh, really looks after her, her groups well. And, um, you know, unfortunately we had, we, Alyssa had some groups that couldn't travel. She had a couple of Christmas and New Year's. So uh, we're looking forward to them coming back, but um, no, we're really blessed to have that. And uh, we're, we're starting to see the fruits of it, of her hard work. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think we're going to see more and more EOX groups take off and the folks who have traveled on it really come back with uh, exciting stories and such. And so, uh, James, I was giving Alyssa a hard time about being there in the studio alone and it being the center of attention. Just uh, uh, she was not real comfortable with that, as you can imagine. <laughs> yeah, she somehow found a makeup artist that we've never found, Tom. I don't know how that happened. You know, uh, she, she does better than you and I, either one ever looked there. That's for sure. Uh, but her face is more red, I think, than either one of ours ever gets. We uh, about that. And, uh, I told her, I said, Shelby should come in and, you know, do powder her nose and stuff. And But Shelby didn't respond. So maybe that's not going to happen, I guess. So uh, maybe next time. Thanks again, Alyssa. Appreciate it. So, thanks, guys. As everybody can see, we got we got James uh, there in the Holy Land right now. Uh, so, uh, boss talk, good to see you. Um, looking forward to being on FL 22 on, on our celebration cruise here in just a, a few days. So we're really going to, going to miss you on that. Yeah, I'm looking forward. I mean, I'm, I'm disappointed. I'm missing that. Uh, obviously looking forward to greeting everyone and Bonner and Claudia are here with me and they are, are, we're our first group back again. So, um, they were, they were our last group in August to be here and our first group back uh, here in January. So rough job. Uh, yeah, it's a, a tough job. Um, See but, a pattern uh, out there. Yeah, it, it's a pattern. So I, I'm missing the celebration cruise. Yes. Um, there's just, there's a lot of, just a lot of logistics really ramping things back up over here and just understanding the protocols and things like that. Um, just to make sure that we all know what to do. If this happens, that happens. And, um, you know, the world's obviously a different place after a couple of years of this. Yeah, that's for sure. So, so look, I'm going to be there in a couple of weeks, looking forward to being there and seeing everyone. But uh, so how are things there and, and for what should we be prepared uh, as we travel? Well, I, you know, the all, um, you know, I, I came, I arrived yesterday. So we went through all of the, everything we've talked about in previous webinars uh, Ashley came over here with me, so she's sitting off camera. Uh, but we, we tried to test all the systems yesterday on our way over. So I did the PCR test. You know, they took mine checking in. Ashley actually presented an antigen test. We both did both PCR and antigen. So Ashley used the antigen to check in. No issues there. Um, and, you know, and then we came and, you know, they still put masks indoors, but, um, and that everything seems pretty pretty normal, and, and that's that's obviously my first question to uh, to Donna and Claudia here. Um, so let me and and welcome everyone uh, from from Jerusalem. Um, it, it, I really wanted Donna and Claudia here on the webinar because Donna and Claudia were here in August, so yes. you were here right before the Delta wave started. I mean, we had to work hard to get you in to the country. They, they didn't want to let those last few groups in August in. So they wanted to close down. So, but you all got in. And then they closed it the next day. Yeah, and then they, yeah, they closed immediately after you got here, which was, yeah. Great. yeah. So, um, we didn't complain. Yeah, so, so you've been here, you were just here then. Now you're here now and you were 
were here in Omicron. Uh, the new new Greek letter. Hopefully there's not another one that we need to test out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so you I mean, so you have both of these experiences now. So and, and everyone's asking, okay, you know, it's Omicron and you know, you know what's you know what's dangerous over there, whatever. And you so you you're our experts. Tell it. I mean, how is it is this different than August other than Wow, it's pretty cold here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, August was exactly that temperature-wise. But have you seen differences? I mean, tell us about the ex both experiences, compare and contrast. Them. There haven't been hardly any changes. I mean, other than the eighty-degree temperature change between you know one hundred and five in August and twenty-five, you know, here, uh, it, it really hasn't changed. Um, the process of Getting here in August and the process of getting here in January really had wasn't a whole lot different, and and while we've been here, it really hasn't been a whole lot different. They're very receptive. I mean, we wear masks indoors, not in the dining room, but then we put our masks on outdoors. We're free to breathe the fresh air, just like home. Yeah, yeah. just like home. So we we've been a really blessed, quite frankly, to have been um, here in August and then again in January under the circumstances. Um, but from the standpoint of just getting here and traveling while we're here, it's been it's been seamless and really we're loving it. Yeah, but so it's been pretty much the same as always. It has. Yeah. You were telling me before we came on camera that in August there's, there's literally no one here. Right. Uh, yeah, you may have been actually the last ones in the country in those we last few days. Yeah. Uh, so you've seen a, a few more groups, but still two. You've seen two. Right. Okay. Yeah. In the whole country. Yeah. yeah. So still, you know, we, we were in the uh, church and nativity and there was one small group there. And when they left, then there was nobody there. OK. And this is a side note. We did a devotional in the cave in the cave. Yeah. 15 minutes or whatever and nobody i mean and I'm, yeah. I'm sorry people it was awesome yeah yeah um and, and obviously we can't guarantee that <laughs> no, 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 no. No. no 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 but I, but just to, just to understand because i you know i, I think a lot of us we get caught up in the moment of right. oh this, there's this big wave and, and we've had other waves you were here at the beginning of the, the delta wave here so um, I mean, I, to me, just a little bit, I've been here, it seems, it seems like it's a little bit more relaxed now than let's say ahead of Delta. Delta was, was certainly a more serious version of this virus than this one. It seems to me like, like a lot of Europe is so, okay, we're just going to live with this as an endemic, like the flu and life goes on. I, I mean, that's the, sort of the sense I'm getting. You've been here four or five days now. I've only just right. on my yeah. second day. Very easy. I mean, it's very relaxing. It's no fear. None. Yeah. Yeah. None. We're they're so happy to see you. We're so we're getting just kudos every time we come in. It's like a party. They're just so yeah yeah thrilled to have us. Both, both in August and in January, there are several hoops you have to go through, mm -hmm. and but there's there's good information out there to go through those hoops without a whole lot of trouble. Um, I mean, the one challenge we had was our flight got changed. Um, and so we had one passenger who had a uh, COVID test that was good for the original um, flight, but was not good for the second flight. And, then, and so we had to quickly get an antigen test done so she could get on the plane. Yeah. So, so she got an that, Yeah. 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 The timing, it seems to be. Uh, I, the timing right now seems to be critical. So I, I, I would encourage all of you out there, um, don't think about where you're going to get that test the day before you need the test. You need to do some planning. I know you all have been great, really, with your folks and making sure they have thought out their testing plan uh, ahead of time. So we got a, a, my, uh, my son had the emergency line on Sunday. 
and he was trying to watch the the NFL playoff game, <laughs> and kept getting all these calls about this that. Yeah, a lot of it was about testing. I don't think people have really thought the testing part through, uh, or filling out the, the online help right. form. Um, so, uh, if if you're a Toro's watching, it's it's good if you probably done that form and maybe even just guide some of your folks to have that. We certainly don't mind answering the questions, but um, I, it seems like people get stressed out when they get to the point of calling the emergency line. So um, there's nothing to be stressed out about. It's, right. it's a form and uh, yeah. you can't, you can't wreck the form or anything like no. that. Start over, do it again. But um, And if as a tour host, you do the form early on, and you can actually go on and do it even before and get a feel for it before you submit it mm -hmm. um, before it gets submitted. So that that I would encourage tour hosts particularly to do. Right, uh, Ashley. What what where do they stumble at um, on that form? I would say there's two sections that I think really trip people up. There's one part of the form that says you need to have what is your group ID. And since we all travel as a group here, we're so used to saying, oh, our group ID is maybe HL22 or whatever it is. But actually, that's not something we fill out at all. It's not a required field. That's a specialty field for people who go through a special program through the uh, Ministry of Tourism. So that's number one. We get calls about that all the time. So if they see that like group number section, just, just skip it. Blank. Leave right. it blank, skip it. Because actually, we don't need it. Um, and then the next thing, there's two more sections after that. One is where you do all your vaccine business. So you fill out your vaccines. The big thing is just to remember that they do day, month, year for those vaccine doses and to add all three doses if you have a booster and you'll have to upload a picture. And then the second thing is they will ask for an isolation address. That's just your hotel address. It's in your final documents. But sometimes that can seem a little you know, misleading if you don't quite understand why they're asking for it. Right, right, right. yeah. Yeah, I, or isolation concerns them. So to recap, Group, the group number field. I mean, so I think it must be all of our school teachers that have a problem. They're not used to leaving anything blank. Exactly. On a test, exactly. So, <laughs> but you leave the group number blank, um, and then there the isolation address is your first hotel. It's your first hotel. Right. And all they're asking for in that is street or or city street, and then the building number. And then when they ask for um, number in the household, um, it. In a hotel, it's like how many households? It's one room. You're yeah. in one room in the hotel, and you've got one person or two people, you know. Exactly. So you just understanding right. that. Right. A suggestion that we happened upon because we use it for something else is we put all of our people on a WhatsApp. We had everybody download a WhatsApp. So when one question was asked, everybody got it. So and we yes. could answer it. Easily, and that was better than email because you know how emails just tag on, tag on, tag on. The WhatsApp does not do that, and we've used it the entire trip. And they, you can upload pictures. It's been amazing. And so, what we're we're sharing with you today it can be recapped at some point. But start your a week and a half, two weeks before with a WhatsApp, and you're going to be so happy throughout your entire tour. That you've done that it's free internet access it's easy yeah um and, and uh, on the bus obviously there's wi-fi so, right. they, so right. they can use that um so you've obviously been here many times have, have you seen now during COVID time have you is your favorite spot change or your or the place that's most meaningful to your travelers has that changed during COVID time versus good old days I don't, I don't think that's changed. Um, what I, what we love about coming back here over and over again and is that they're constantly finding new things. And even in the sites that we've gone to over and over again, they're constantly unearthing new things that are continuing to affirm the accuracy of scripture and continue to tell more and more of the story of the Holy Land. And so uh, I don't, I don't, um, I don't think that I've had favorite places change because of COVID. Um, I just think that um, it gets more and more exciting every time you come because of what's being on earth. Good. Same for you, Claudia. I would agree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And your guests feel the same. I mean, are you... well, this is their first time. The first time. We have all first timers. Okay. And it has been, well, and you know, when you're a first timer, everyone has an expectation and it's never quite what you expect, but nobody has been disappointed at all. Yeah. 
How many, and you have about 20? Yeah, there's about 19. Yeah, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, and no issues with that that number. Of, oh, of folks. I, I, it's a great. It's number. a great number. Yeah. yeah. Good. Um, so uh, you're obviously retired. Uh, or, I mean, you're retired. You are very <laughs> active. Right. Retired. Right. You're redirected. <laughs> yeah, you're redirected. So, what, what's what's your ministry look like now? Well, when I stepped back from pastoring after 33 years, um, God called us to begin training and equipping pastors and church leaders internationally, and so. Um, so now we go to um, places like Honduras and Cuba and Zambia and Albania. We're going to be in Peru in February. And, um, and so now we get the chance to just help that next generation um, and equip them for, for doing ministry in, in limited resource parts of the world. Parts of the world. Yeah. yeah, it's ex really exciting what, what you do. And I, We're loving it. I, I know you do that all over. Um, so if we have questions that, you know, please send the questions in. Uh, Donna, Claudia, you're here. Um, Ashley, we had one about how soon before departure do we fill out the form? So the form itself says you can fill it out 48 hours before departure. However, we do, we suggest 24 hours in our documentation. You can fill it out a little bit before 24 hours. The reason why is due to time changes and flight times. It's actually not quite 48 hours. So don't mean that to confuse you. All of our documentation says 24 hours. But. Okay. okay, so somewhere between 24 and 48 if Correct. you really want to get ahead, but 24 is fine. It's, yeah, 24 We've had, is we've had no one reject it because mean, of the form. People, not that I suggest this, but you could fill it out if you were desperate at the airport. It'd be fine. It's yes. an instantaneous reply. Actually, we had, we've had that happen. Sure. Yeah. You know. We had a young lady that was going to Hebrew University who she's By sitting herself. in the air, airport in Chicago with us. And we're talking with her. And and finally, we were able to help her fill that thing out. Yeah, yeah. I, I, there was a couple of people yesterday at the airport that were filling it out yeah. while they were staying. It happens, uh, you know. In line. So um, I, I would say at the airport, it's there's been a few changes. Uh, mm -hmm. So you do get your COVID testing there. Uh, the passport check is actually much sooner now in the airport. So mm -hmm. um, so uh, you'll, those of you coming here soon, you'll see a, a few changes in the airport. I think they're really good. We we have the meet and greet service actually get you at the, right at the gate. It was, uh, they were great, yeah, really yeah. good. And, and really walk you all the way. Yeah, right. you had that walk in August, we had that here. And, um, you know, you can't circumvent them, but they're awesome. They get you from the, the plane to you're getting your passport in down to the, your luggage. And then the COVID death kits, they're a wonderful asset. Yeah, yeah, good, good. And then out to the bus. And then yeah. out to the bus. Or out right. to the, where the guy is. Yeah. Right, so, right. The right. guides cannot be in the airport now, no. uh, just so you know. So airport is very secure from health perspective, um, as it always has been from a security perspective. So yeah. um, I'm trying to think if there are any other changes we've noticed here. I, what? How would you encourage other tourists that are coming here in the next few months? Uh, any other words of wisdom? Well, one thing I... What I you know, everybody's concerned about such and such because they read the news, and I said... Here's the good news. If it's in the news, it's already happened. So we just keep going forward. So I would just encourage you, um, you know, God has our days number and just take a deep breath and yeah. you know, take the next step. Early on, we we just, we plan to, to go until we can't. That's our ministry model. And so that would be our encouragement to all of the tour hosts, plan, and just continue to move forward with anticipation of being able to go. And if at whatever point in time, you know, God just shuts things down, well, then he shuts things down. But until then, keep planning. Good. I, I, I appreciate that advice. Um, we've got um, some testing questions. We've got some testing questions here. Are COVID shots required? I don't, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what that question is. Um, now, the next question, how often do folks have to get tested while there? I mean, while you're here, you get tested when you arrive um, and you get the test, you get the test back right now with the, with the, uh, it's just like in the United States with the immense amount of people taking tests countrywide, it seems like the results are coming back slower than what they have, than what they were doing in, in August. Right. I would say that is one difference. Um, 
I, I think that's going to recede here in the next two, three weeks. And I don't think that's a long term problem. It wasn't a problem uh, for the last 20, 21 months. So, um, uh, so that you get tested when you arrive and then you get tested uh, then before you leave. And that's a requirement in the United States to come back uh, home. So um, those are the only two times. There's no intermediate tests, uh, nothing in between. Um, so that there are no testing that's affecting the scheduling. We do the testing here. I don't know when you're tested. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. It's tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so we have them come to the hotel and uh, do the testing here at the hotel in the evening. So that doesn't impact uh, your touring as well. Um, home tests are not acceptable. That's another question here. So you do have to get that done. Documentation. Yeah. Do have to, uh, any comments, Ashley? I know Ashley's off screen here, but I'm sure you can hear. Um, <laughs> any other documentation uh, questions that we have? Um, no, the home test is definitely not accepted. I know we have a question here asking which test. Um, oh, the regarding, sorry, the, regarding the test that we give here in the hotel, we actually prearrange those. So the people who come, there's like a nurse who comes and tests everybody. They have your passport number already ready. They have your name already ready. So it should be a pretty efficient, smooth process. They set you up with like an appointment time. And so that, that's pretty much how it's working here in the hotel. Um, the only other time you'll need additional testing is if you go on to like an extension in another country, that obviously that country may require something additional. Um, that's pretty much it. We did have a question about um, quarantine. Do we want to talk a little bit about that? I was going to ask about the Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the, the quarantine, well, there, there's a couple of things here. Um, uh, so Tom, I'll give you, I'll give you sort of the highlights of the update. Um, the quarantine here is also at five days, and that continues to evolve. A lot of things are evolving as we go. I mean, I talked to a lot of the, the locals who are still trying to figure out exactly what's happening from day to day. Do I need a mask here? Or um, so a lot of these rules are very fluid. So what we say today may not even apply by tomorrow. I, one of those being um, it, it, they're debating whether they even keep the green pass uh, system up. Now, for part of that, you fill it out, you get a green pass to come in. So... I'm not sure. Has anyone ever checked a green pass? No. no. Going into anywhere. So no. we'll, we'll see if that. So oh, I mean, like at a site or something. At a yeah, site or a restaurant. Something. Yeah. Yeah. No one, no one's checked. Um, I think for locals, maybe going to a local restaurant, some, they're probably, they may be checking, but they're talking about just totally getting rid of that system uh, because it's, you know, it's just here. Uh, so they're making life so much more difficult. So things continue to change. Quarantine's five days. Um, uh, the that's not five days once you get in the country. That's if you get yeah. No, no, this is that's if you if you tested positive once you get here. That starts. Um, there seems to be a question of where you where you would do a quarantine. That may actually be in the hotel. Now that the actually tourists here, they're they're having to confront that question. So that may not even be as bad as it sounds. That may actually go down from. Well, we've from been quarantined days. twice. And both were, we were in Natanya. You now you were you were in isolation after you that, arrived. That's a difference. Like right. Isolation yeah. versus quarantine. Yes, right. And you're fed very well. <laughs> and one of the pluses, if you've ever been here before, is you actually get off the plane and the bus and you can rest. You don't start hopping around the train. You're fed very well, very efficient, and you if you're going to be in isolation, you just mentally. No, you need to relax. You can sleep in the only time in the whole trip. It's awesome. So, yeah. um, so the isolation has been a rule. We'll, we'll see if they continue to okay. keep that rule the same. Right. Um, so it'd be nice if it was even shorter or, or eliminated. just eliminated. Right. Uh, so we, we may get there pretty quickly too, just by handicapping things. Um, the borders are now open to the country. So you can actually come into Jordan, from Jordan or from Egypt. And we, we, were, we were having groups go out both directions, but now they're allowing groups to come in uh, through both borders. That does not mean we're going to immediately change, because right? some of you, we changed the itineraries to come to Israel and then go out. I think we're going to continue to do that until we see what the testing situation is um, being um, if, if you're on itinerary that went to Jordan, came to Israel, went back to Jordan, well, you're going to be taking five or six tests. And 
I don't really think anybody really wants to do that. That's it's a lot of tests. So until we can see the number of tests go down, we probably will still do Israel and then finish in Jordan if you're on one of those itineraries. Um, so we're not immediately rushing to, to change back to what we had. Uh, we're, we're trying to minimize uh, costing and just you having to take so many tests. Uh, and at this point, that's still, the changes we've made are still very applicable um, uh, to the current situation. Again, we'll keep uh, looking at that. Um, uh, that. Uh, they've also been working on antigen, antigen tests to go home. Uh, part of the reason I'm here and not on the celebration cruise is we just, we're talking through all those things. Um, I know the antigen tests here seem to be very unreliable. So maybe cheaper than the PCR test to go home, but if they're giving back half false positives, everybody's saying, okay, we'll just do it with the PCR and pay a little bit more money. Uh, so we're trying to figure that out as we go uh, here this week. I mean, obviously you all are doing PCR tests. We were, we were doing antigen. Uh, yeah. PCR? Yeah. That was in cover Yeah, I, I think we're, we're still PCR I'm here clear. Uh, <laughs> until we uh, see that. Um, I, the other thing, which um, just looking at the other, there's, uh, we get a lot of questions in the office about the uh, plan for a fourth booster shot. And that's made worldwide headlines. They've given fourth booster shots to some of their immunocompromised and those over 60 here. Uh, but a couple of days ago, they came out and said, well, that's really not doing what we hoped it would do against the Omicron variant. I'm not saying they don't have, it's not keeping people from catching it. Uh, the symptoms are less, but they're not even recommending that for their whole population. So I cannot see that they're gonna recommend a fourth booster shot for tourists coming. Uh, so a lot of people are very paranoid about that. And I don't, I really think, let's not worry about a fourth booster shot. I don't see that. Um, uh, coming here. So again, much as much like Europe, uh, it seems to be the, the model is shifting to an endemic model, flu, cold season uh, type thing, be, be smart about it. And, and that leads me to my final point. Um, I, I think be careful where you're traveling two or three days before you actually make this trip. You know, don't go out and hang out on, on Bourbon Street in New Orleans. It may not be your smartest thing. Um, because we, we actually had some people that tested positive the day before coming and couldn't come. Uh, so be, be cognizant of what you're doing two or three days before you come. And, you know, if you can stay close to home, I'd recommend that. I, I, and, and these people were disappointed. Again, I was hearing those phone calls on Sunday and, um, you know, that they couldn't travel, but, um, and, if you do get a positive test, our other recommendation is you might want to go take an antigen test or something because you only have to, you just need a negative test. It doesn't matter if you have two positive, one negative, you show the <laughs> negative one. Um, so, um, you know, because sometimes those things, those things can be false. Right. Uh, and we had uh, Joy Carr, who's here with her group now. She oh, got she, a positive. She made it. She, yeah, she made it. Oh, she, but she had a positive. She's right. since had three negatives, though. Yeah, she had a positive, oh, but then had three yeah. negative tests so, uh, immediately thereafter. So bless her heart for going through all that. But <laughs> yeah. Good for her. Yeah. yeah. So just so don't give. I mean, the bottom line is don't give up hope, but also sort of be wise what you're doing right before you come, uh, which is just a good general uh, rule, because um, we don't want you to fail the tests. We, we certainly want you to travel. Uh, a lot of you have waited for a long time to do this, so uh, just be careful those last couple of days. Um, we have see. some testing questions. More testing questions. <laughs> yes. Um, do you want to actually? Do you sit, want me to come? Do you want to come over and sit here? <laughs> you I want me to? Seat, um, uh, sure, I can <laughs> if you want me to. The audience can excuse us. <laughs> yeah, sorry, everybody. I didn't get dolled up for everybody. I apologize. <laughs> so I'll just cover some of these uh, testing questions. Tom, just let me know if anything else comes through while I'm talking. I will do. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, so basically we have a question here from Dave. He asked what we recommend in terms of PCR tests or antigen tests before travel. I'll let Claudia and Don also talk to this, but I personally recommend just doing whatever's easiest in your area. <laughs> you know the clinics near you. Some clinics don't have PCR tests that are that quick and we have right. antigen tests. So, I mean, what did you find that your group did? Well, we had some in our group who got PCR tests and they thought they were going to get them within 24 hours and they didn't get them until this week. Uh, yeah. You know, a day after okay. we got here. 
Uh, and so then the day that we're flying out, we had uh, an individual had to get an antigen test to okay. take. Um, for us, we, we're set up we're, with our doctor <coughs> making an appointment for us. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> we get a PCR test and I get the, so we get the, the answers within a half hour. So um, really, you, you just need to talk of what's yeah, going on in your area. And some of it's terminology and nobody mm -hmm. really either pays attention or needs to, but we told our group rapid mm -hmm. negative, a, rap, a rapid PCR mm -hmm. test. Rapid yeah. is the is the key. RT-PCR is what yeah. they're called. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, because even when I called in to get ours from our, our doctor, the lady that was taking it said, well, you know, she wasn't even on top of it. So just be... Um, Intentional. If you're going to make an appointment, yeah. rapid, 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 rapid is what you want. It appears that the it appears that most of the airports have a pretty good system going on um, to where you can get you know an antigen test that morning um, if you're leaving right. the later evening or whatever. But um, yeah, whatever okay. works best in the area. So those are our recommendations. <laughs> um, the other thing we have here is the pre-testing requirements. Just to kind of go over it again. It's 72 hours before the flight that takes you to Israel. And I know that's kind of bulky wording, but the reason I say it like that is if you have a connection, like in their case, you know, they, you connected in Chicago and then Newark, is that correct to say? Right. And we were supposed to go directly yes. from Chicago, from Chicago to, to yeah. yeah. So in that, their case, it's not their, you know, flight from home. It's not their flight from Chicago. In their case, it's the timing of their flight from Newark that takes them directly to Tel Aviv. So it's 72 for that. PCR or 24 for the antigen. So you have a connection in Europe, the 24 for the antigen is very hard to accomplish. I'm not, I'm not even going to, you know, sugarcoat it. It's pretty tough to, to meet that requirement. So all that is to say, it depends on your flight timing as well for that 72 and 24. And decision. they're rigid. Um, oh, oh, they check. Yeah. They do. We had they a gal, sure we had a gal that was fine when we left Chicago. When we landed in Newark, it expired like 45 minutes before. Yeah. And so she had to have a, an antigen test wow. right by the gate. Yeah, it was a little nail biting, but <laughs> it's what it is. Worked out. Yeah. Yeah, fortunately, it was great. And then we do have a question regarding quarantining. So we were kind of talking about two different things yeah. here. Um, the isolation that Claudia and Don are talking about that they went through. So everybody, when they arrive to Israel, you get a test upon arrival. That test upon arrival, essentially, you wait for the results to come in or you quarantine for 24 hours or isolate for 24 hours. So when you're filling out that health form, the reason they're asking you for an isolation address is for that 24 hour window. So you arrive, you go straight to your hotel and you isolate either for 24 hours or until you get the results. So if you get the results sooner, like they did in August, they, you know, they were on their merry way within 10 hours. Yeah. Um, but quarantining, kind of James talked a little bit about that five days, that's if you get your test result back from your arrival test and it's positive, then you have to enter a five-day quarantine. And that's a little bit of a different situation. You have to actually, you know, consult with our contacts and you have contact information on your finals and they'll help you set up that quarantine. Um, we haven't quite experienced that yet, but when we know more or kind of what that process looks like, of course, we'll share. So there are two sex, um, two different things you're dealing with. I know we had a question about that. Um, and then last but not least, someone did ask about testing costs in Israel. It's a $125 test package. And that gets you your arrival test and your return test. And we, pre, we prepay those and we pre-collect it. Okay? Good. And one of the things that changed too from August to now is in August, we had to have a serology oh, test. Oh, true, and it went down. So we had price. to have a blood test and now we, you don't. So yeah. that's huge. That was really, that is a big, yeah. That is a big one. Okay, good. Did I cover it all, Tom? Yes, ma'am. I thank you. You know, I did have someone here who asked, uh, how would someone who was quarantined, uh, hopefully that won't happen, uh, upon arrival, catch up with the group when they test negative? That's a good question. So we do have contact information on our finals. That is like a number of a local person, and that person will assist you with catching up with the group. They'll know the whereabouts of the guide and the group, whether they're in a different city area and once you're released from that quarantine, the Ministry of Health, from what we understand, is facilitating the transportation, but I haven't seen it. So they'll facilitate the transportation and we'll, we'll get you to the right place. Whatever we need, if we need to send a cab to get you there, we'll do that too. So once I know a little bit more of how that works, um, I'll let you know. 
Luckily, yeah. we haven't experienced that at all, right? So we're I know, it's a good thing. Right so that's been great. So yeah, well, thanks to uh, you, Ashley, uh, for all the great information. Don and Erica, so good to see you. Thank you for, uh, for being there and for going through the process and helping us uh, get the information out. And of course, uh, James, thank, thank you. I think we answered all the questions that I, I've seen pop up here. Uh, so anything else, James, that, that you want to share uh, from there? No, we're just, we're here diligently working through that. Um, you know, uh, on some of those quarantine issues, we have uh, our normal hospitality staff will be coming back first of February. So they will be here, um, you know, as long as we have folks here, they'll be here the rest of the year. So we are uh, working through those things. So really getting ready to, to see a lot of you. And, and as Tom mentioned, you're, you're heading here February 5th, I think. So uh, we'll see a lot of familiar faces uh, when you come. So and they'll be so happy to see you. You get the biggest, you get the biggest hugs from people you didn't even know how they smiled in the past. It's awesome. <laughs> I, I and I know we had we had footage you sent us of your group here yeah. now. I, I don't know if we want to play that, Tom. I'll I'll leave that to your discretion. Yeah, you know we've got a little bit of time here, so I think it'd be good to hear from those folks and let them share. So Ryan, would you please share that video of, of Don and Erica's group that's there now? I think it was always a, a wish of mine and a desire and one of those things that you put on your bucket list. But the fact that it came to fruition and that I'm actually here is totally overwhelming. I second that from my sister. <laughs> it is surreal. It is beautiful. It is peaceful, calm, amazing. Well, my initial thought, it's still early in the tour. So we've just been to one or two places, but we're standing here in the Sea of Galilee. And it's interesting to see the perspective that actually physically being in some place that you've only read about gives you. So being able to see the sea and the layout and where everything is, is a, uh, is a great experience. Um, it's very different than even what I would have expected, especially today, the, the tour and our guide is really remarkable and his understanding and his ability to connect these places to scripture has been pretty remarkable. It's, uh, it's just been cool to see sort of the, the, the places and the, the things that are mentioned in scripture that are sort of, sort of brought to life that we can kind of get a sense of where these places are and learn about uh, a little bit more about the, the culture and some of the other things. Um, so just kind of adding another dimension to what what uh, is, is written down in the scriptures. I just bringing the scriptures more alive, being able to connect with all the things that I've learned about my childhood on and to be able to say, oh, that's what that looks like. I think that's probably the most um, perfect experience is knowing that our Lord walked in these places and I'm walking there now. Um, it just fills your heart to know that you're where your roots are. I, my heart is so full right now. <laughs> it's just amazing and it feels so good to, to be here and to understand and see it with your own eyes. Uh, well, there was a lot of fear for me, first because of COVID and, and now that everything's on TV. But, oh my goodness, it's just a modern place. Mm -hmm. And first of all, some hotel was great, food was wonderful. You know, there's risk to everything, and God is in control. Um, I, I certainly haven't felt uh, any particular security concerns while I've been here. Wow, it's it's felt remarkable. You say yeah. nobody. No, for yeah. one thing, nobody in the airports. There's also nobody here right now, and I know that will change. I mean, the number of hoops that we've had to jump through as being one of the first people back into the country after being shut down for several months. Uh, could be a little overwhelming at times, but it, even though it's overwhelming, it was smoothly done. The instructions were there, and we just kept plugging away at it until we got here, so here we are. I've never felt safer and more secure, and um, I, there hasn't been a spot where I felt uncomfortable on our entire tour.
Oh, the hotel loves us back. Oh, they were so welcoming. <laughs> they want us. So if, if people are thinking about coming, come. I, from a safety standpoint, there's uh, no worries at all. Great. That was a good video there. We appreciate that, uh, Ryan and team, for, for sharing that. First of all, before we, before we wind up here, let me apologize to Claudia. Evidently, I've said Erica. I have a friend, <laughs> uh, Don and Erica, and I'm saying, and Jamie says, you've been calling her Erica. And I said, really? I'm sorry. So, uh, so I do know who Claudia is. And thankfully, we've recorded this for all eternity now. People can watch Tom blow it online. And Claudia, you know how permission to call me Tim or uh, how about Jamie? Jamie? No, do not call me Jamie. Please don't call me. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but thank you. So uh, folks, just uh, uh, to let you know some information, uh, we have our uh, Oberama gal is coming up quickly. Uh, it's very quickly now. Uh, it's uh, almost upon us. I know that James and team has been working uh, on getting uh, all the hospitality schedules pulled together for that so we all know when we're going to be there and how that's going to happen so looking forward to seeing some of you there if you haven't made your uh trip yet we're we still got a few places open uh some uh, opportunities for you to, to make your plans to go there so we hope that that you'll do that uh, if you remember we had to postpone our uh fam trip our holy land familiar trip that was scheduled to happen uh the 10th of this month uh it didn't happen it's going to happen the 7th of march uh, the registration deadline for that is the 7th of February. So if you have pastors and friends that you're uh, hoping to be able to get on that trip, uh, you've got a couple of weeks left that you can get them registered, and uh, we would appreciate you doing that. We have a really good group planning to go. A lot of those have uh, come on over and have changed their dates, so uh, we hope that you'll be able to go with us. The, the walking uh, tour, uh, two of those, first the Jesus Trail, uh, is now up, and hopefully you can register for that uh, online either today or, uh, or in the next couple of days. Uh, so that's their great program. The, uh, you notice the dates now are September the 13th uh, through the 20th, so pay attention to that. Uh, Camino, uh, we've got that uh, trip coming up with a, a pre-tour option, uh, so we hope that you'll uh, make plans for that in October. Then in November, we're going to be going back to Greece and to Turkey, uh, hope that you will uh, make one of those trips. Uh, we're going to Greece the 2nd of November uh, to Turkey the 8th of November. So uh, both great trips. I know that, that you'll want to go to, if you've not been before, come back, get a group and go back because everybody who goes uh, loves it. So we're really, really excited about those. Our next webinar uh, is going to be February the 1st. Uh, it's going to be coming to you from all over the place. We're getting pretty good at this, James. Uh, I've had multiple locations. I mean, I'm in Kentucky. You're in the Holy Land. Alyssa was in um, Lakeland, Florida. And so it's pretty cool to be able to do that. I, I think that's kind of exciting. Next week, we'll be on the open sea somewhere. Uh, I'm not for sure where. Uh, and uh, on February the 1st. So so join us then. We'll be talking uh, about Obramagal and other trips then. So uh, thank you all for joining us today. Anything, James, you want to say before we sign off? No, I just encourage everyone to, to keep traveling. Um, I think we're through the, the worst of the Omicron in the U.S. And uh, I think here they'll be through it probably next week or so. And then, it's, you know, so I, like I said last time, it, you know, don't get caught up in exactly what's happening today. I, that's, that's looking better and better in the U.S., uh, I think, as we go forward. But, um, you know, just if you're going in March, I, we probably won't even be talking about this in March. Oh, that would uh, be but, so nice. You know, so, um, you know, just, just keep moving forward, be positive uh, for folks. And they're going to have a great experience here. Yeah, so. Great, great. So, well, looking forward to seeing everybody uh, on uh, and, and the Holy Land here in a, a few weeks. Thank you for being with us. Uh, have a great uh, couple of weeks. We'll see you soon. God bless.